Hi, my name is Johnny. I'm working with Michael Lewis, and also I'm grateful to the help of Jeff Kilroy for this project that we're calling the Global Secular Calendar. But of course, it could be called anything. Right now, it's just name to be decided. Uh, here are some examples of a mock-up that we've created to help to show you what kind of functionality we want this new service to have. At the high level, it's meant to be a directory and a calendar for everyone in the secular community, uh, atheists, humanists, skeptics, and other kinds of non-believers, allowing people to take portions as they will without having to use the whole system. Let's begin on the home page. Here at this slideshow, which you can see at the URL eventsinsider.com slash secular, Again, that's eventsinsider.com slash secular. You can step through this yourself if you'd like to. Just follow the yellow arrow to know where to click, or use the black bar, which always has left and right arrows, to go backwards and forwards through the slide set. In the black bar at the very top, you will always see a summary of the slide that's being shown. So if you're going through this yourself without the video, you'll be able to use that to help you orient yourself. Here on the home page, I'm showing you three stories. The idea of the three stories is to lead you through what it would look like to use the product. Again, this is just a mock-up. Let's start with story one. In story one, I'm going to show you just a glimpse of what it's like to assemble the global secular calendar and put it in your website. The idea of the calendar is to be decentralized which is to say, although there is one website that contains the calendar that we manage, it's really meant to be viewed in your website or the websites of others. For this example, I'm going to use JREF. Let's proceed to figure 1.01. Here, for example, is the finished product. If you had a before and an after photo, this would be the after. If an example of the JREF website with the community calendar embedded. I'll talk to you a lot more in detail about how to create this, but let me first show you the configuration page. This is a screenshot from the potential website that Michael Lewis and I are creating. Right now, of course, there's no real name, and we look forward to deciding that with all of you. But this page is meant to customize your calendar. Later on in Story 3, I'll tell you more about how we got to this page and how the page is to be used. But just as an example, on the lower right, there's a Customize bar that allows you to set a title, such as Skeptic Calendar, and allows you to set the width and the height and the color of your widget. Then, let's step forward to Figure 1.03. You create a web page with a blank space. Notice that here on Figure 1.03, Everything here is JREF content. However, there is a blank space left for the calendar, which then we fill in figure 1.04. So proceed to that. So here again is the picture I showed you earlier. It's the same screenshot of the JREF website with the community calendar embedded. And notice that it's only showing skeptic events. In fact, it's only showing skeptic events of a certain size, a regional size, or a global size. It's not showing any local events because this is meant to be a big important event calendar. Again, I'll tell you more about this in Story 3. That's the end of Story 1. Let's proceed into Story 2. Story 2 is not really about JREF. It's about a user. I'm going to call her Leilani. Let's say that she's browsing the web and comes across the JREF website. That's figure 2.01. So here again is the JREF website with the embedded Skeptic Community Calendar. Lilani notices that all the events down below where the mouse cursor is are in New York. That's because the website has automatically found her location and then set up the search results to mirror wherever she is. However, because she lives in Detroit for the moment, she fills in Detroit here on the location keyword bar and then clicks Go to get to slide 2.02. .02. 
Notice that below, on slide 2.02, we now see Detroit, Michigan, and some events from that area on the bar. Now she wants to send this event, the Detroit Skeptic Olympics, to friends on Twitter. To do that, she could click through to the event details page. There is an entire page dedicated to telling her more about this event. However, that event details page is not part of this story. So for now, she'll simply click on the Twitter icon, which is available right on the miniature summary. So that's right here. Look at the yellow arrow with the blue button. You click on that, and it pops up a little pop-up, which is filled with the information. Of course, she can edit this if she wants to before sending. But let's say that she's satisfied, and she clicks Tweet, this blue button on the lower right. And that brings us to slide 2.03b. So she's back to the Skeptic Community Calendar with events in Detroit, because that's what she chose. Now she wants to add this event, the Olympics, to her calendar. Notice the calendar icon here where my mouse cursor is and the yellow arrow. I click on that and I get a pop-up which asks me which calendar I want to insert this event into. She uses Google, so I'm going to click on Google Calendar. And here is just an example of what it would look like in her Google Calendar. Notice it down below where the mouse is there is the Skeptic Olympics inserted into our calendar. Let's proceed to the next slide. So here she is back on the JREF website with the embedded calendar, but this time this search bar that I've highlighted does not contain enough information for her. She wants to go to the advanced search, so she clicks advanced search, and that brings us to figure 2.07. Notice it's the same screenshot, except that this middle area that I'm highlighting, this search bar, is new. So here, it's already been configured with all the JREF defaults. It's defaulting to show just events that are skeptic events, and it's defaulting to show just events that are global or national in scope. And because she lives in Detroit, it's automatically set to North America, the Great Lakes, Michigan, and Detroit. Of course, she can now change these if she wants to search outside these parameters. But for the time being, she wants to do a date search. So she clicks in the date box, not on the word date, and we go to the next slide, 2.08, in which the date box pops up. Now she wants to get these events emailed to her weekly. So she goes to the top right where it says Get Events Emailed Weekly and clicks on that. A login box appears for her to type in her email and password and optionally her name. She can either cancel out of this or she can ask for more information or she can click submit. If she clicks submit, what will happen is that she gets emailed the events that she's configured every week. And that brings us to the end of story two. Let's proceed to story three. Story three is going to be similar to story one. I'm going to show you in much more detail how to customize a calendar to insert into your website. This time I'm not going to use JREF as an example. Instead I'll use Bob. Let's say that Bob is the president of the Humanist Students of Michigan, a group somewhere in Ann Arbor that has perhaps 50 students. Again I'm going to click to proceed. This would be a good time for me to stop and let you know that all the design that you've seen so far the fonts and the colors are really meant to be just a placeholder. We haven't made any decisions on anything so far and we're looking forward to your feedback. Obviously it's important to us to have the most interesting and compelling website while staying within the limits that were given by you. So let's proceed into story three. On slide 301 here's an example of Bob's Humanist Students of Michigan website. Notice that its color is Mm, kind of an ugly purple, but that's okay. We're going to click to proceed. Here on this page, Bob notices that the location bar has been automatically filled in by the server sensing where it thinks he lives. And also, he types in the keyword humanist that I'm highlighting here. Then he clicks submit. 
to find an event. On this page, Bob wants to find an event. He notices that down below in the orange box, the system has already located his position and filled in the words Ann Arbor. But then Bob types humanist and clicks submit to do a search for an event. On this slide, 302, he's shown the results of his search. And of course, this looks much like what we've seen in previous screenshots. But this time, Bob wants to install this calendar in his website. Notice the bright orange arrow, and down below it says, Get Custom Events on your website. So Bob clicks on your website, and is brought to the customization tool that we saw before. But this time, I'm not going to skip through it. I'm going to show you how to use it. So at the top of the bar where the name is, you can type a new name. You can also change the width. You can change the height. You can change the colors of the background and the text. Let's say that Bob changes all of this and makes it all purple to match his website. Then he clicks Save, and voila. Here we have the HSM community calendar with a custom name, all looking purplish. Bob goes down to install this on your website, clicks to install, and it asks him to log in. Now Bob already has an account, so he'll just type his email and password. He clicks submit, and he gets some computer code. Now I'm not going to show you how to edit websites. That's done in different ways for every administrator. But here, let's just say that Bob clicks done. He gets the code. Here's the blank space that he inserts it into. And into the blank space goes the calendar. So that's what it might look like. Let's say now that Bob wants to insert another calendar, but instead put it on his home page. And you know what? There's a lot less space than his home page. Bob is not going to be able to create a blank space nearly this large on his home page. So he returns to the tool. This is Bob's account page or his My page, his landing page. It's the place that Bob gets to by default whenever he logs in. You can see that Bob has been here before. In fact, down below, we already have him in our database as the leader of a student group. On the right-hand side is the calendar that he just created, his custom view. Bob clicks on Copy, and it copies and gives him a new view. Let's edit this view now. So Bob clicks on the Edit button. This brings us back to our Customize page. And notice it looks just the same as the last view, except that now it's called Calendar 2. But Bob wants this to be much smaller. So he adjusts the width, as I'm doing now. And then he clicks Save. And here we have a much smaller widget. Again, Bob's going to install it on his website. Allow me to skip the computer code, and we'll go right to the screenshot that shows it installed on his home page. Now, one thing that I wanted to show you before ending is that Bob doesn't have to list all the events in the database. As you already know, he can select a region. He can select a philosophy. If he wants just the atheist events, here he is with atheist events. If he wants just, say, the local events, he can select just the local events. If he wants, for example, just the discussions and lectures, he can choose discussions and lectures. Of course, we haven't decided yet what categories should go in the activities bar, and it could be that we have dozens of them, meaning that we'll have to change the interface. We look forward to, of course, discussing that with all of you. That on the right-hand bar, all people is meant for certain segments of society. For example, seniors, military, a minority group, teens and kids, or adults or whatever. Of course, again, this bar is to be decided. Also on this page, if Bob doesn't want to show events from all groups in the world, he can limit it to just his own events. So here under Show Only My Group, is Bob selecting humanist students. This is a group that Bob runs, so the system knows to offer it to him as an option. This allows Bob to create a calendar which is just for his group and place it anywhere he wants to to showcase his own events. This, of course, is especially useful for groups that don't already have their own calendar. Click here to proceed, where the yellow arrow is. 
That's the end of story three. And if you click again, you'll get back to the home page. This is the end of the presentation, and I look forward to getting your feedback and speaking with you all. Again, to find the slideshow, go to eventsinsider.com secular. Thank you.